welcome back to Exotic Wine Travel. I am your host, Matthew Horky. We're here with another video about Hungarian wines. And, you know, we were in Hungary for three weeks. We've had a amazing time. Uh, <clears throat> before I start this video, I do want to thank some people that helped us out. Wine Amore Travel and WineSofa.eu. They're our friends. Uh, I will put their links in the description box. They've helped us organize visits with producers and some organize some accommodation as well. So, one of the wines that I really wanted to taste when I came to Hungary was Bikaver, or Bull's Blood from Egan. Now, from those of you who don't know, you know, Hungary was occupied by the Ottomans, and there's a, a story behind the Bull's Blood blend. Uh, when the Ottomans were coming to this village, uh, Egan, the locals just got really, really messed up on some red wine and they had you know they had red wine all over their faces their teeth and their eyes and the ottoman soldiers were even though they outnumbered the villagers they went back and they they were scared they told their commanders that they thought the villagers were drinking bull's blood and made them real fierce so that's kind of where the name came from it's a unique blend they make it actually in Egar, where it originated in north hungary and in sexard in the south and bull's blood is actually a blend that has to be a majority of Kek Frankos or Kadarka, local grapes. And then it can have a bunch of other grapes in a Merlot, Cabernet Franc, Syrah, Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, I think Merlot as well. Some other grapes in there as well. There are barrel age restrictions, requirements as well. And there are different yield processes. You can have regular Bicaver, Superior, and Grand Superior. But anyway, get enough of the technical stuff. <laughs> if you look in the past, I did a video on a cheap bull's blood bicaver. When I was back in the United States, I found it on the shelf for like five bucks. It was drinkable. It wasn't great. But I knew there was high quality stuff being made there. So we went to Edgar for a day. And it was a beautiful, small little town. <clears throat> we visited three producers. All of them had vineyards on the most prestigious vineyard site in Egger. And you know, what I like about Hungary is there's a real emphasis on single vineyard wines and sites. And a lot of times on the label, they will actually put those vineyard names or sites on the label. And the vineyard space to know if you're an Egger is called, uh, let me see if I'm pronouncing this right, Najigen. Najigen Hill. It's the largest, it's actually the highest elevation vineyards in Hungary. Hungary is not a high country. The hill goes to about over 500 meters in elevation. There's over 30 hectares of vineyards on the south and southwest facing slopes. Very steep. When, uh, unfortunately, when we were there, it was rainy and muddy, so the cars couldn't go up the steep hill. But I, had, I saw it from afar, and I've seen pictures of it. It really reminds me kind of the vineyards, the, the steep. It kind of looks like Her the Hermitage Hill in southern Rhone in France. But, uh, and sorry, the Northern Road in France. But anyways, the three wineries we went to all had vineyards on the hill. They're the only three. Grof Butler, um, Kovac Nimrod, and St. Andreas. And our first stop was a Gro uh, Grof Butler. They picked us up. They were fantastic. They have this beautiful cellar. It was drilled into the side of the hill, so their cellar is all old rock. It's beautiful on the side. They have lots of space. They actually have so much space that they have a little bank where they actually sell her and store other people's wine for them. And in terms of their wines, we tasted through all of their superior level wines. And you know what I have to say? The wines were a little bit rustic, if I were to be honest. But in all the wines, I could taste a high level of high quality fruit. And that's because all their superior wines come from the Najigit Hill. And their Bikavar Superior blend was really actually fantastic. <laughs> Had a great no amount of notes of aging uh, a little bit of bread, and then the fruit was nice as well. Some spice and some complexity. I'll put those notes in the description box uh, in the article, in the tasting article. <coughs> Excuse me. Grof Butler also made a Kadarka from Najiged, and it was a late harvest infected with noble rot, dry red wine. I thought it was very interesting, very delicious. Not for everybody, but for some hardcore wine geeks. You might want to check them out if you are in Hungary. Uh, the second visit, we went to <coughs> excuse me, one of the most famous producers here in Hungary, Kovac Nimrod. He actually lives in the U.S. He's Hungarian, spent some time in Hungary. 
a uh, big-time businessman, but he owns one of the more famous wineries. He also has 10 hectares of vineyards on Najigan. His wines are, he also exports to the American market, so they're a little bit bigger. They're more extracted. They're richer. But he makes some beautiful stuff. I mean, Shireen was really impressed with his Vatna Chardonnay. She said it really reminded her of some Santa Barbara County Chardonnays. He also made a Pinot Noir out of Clone 777. And it was really interesting. So anyways, while we were in the cellar, we were with the winemaker, the consultant, and the owner. And Shireen said, 777, is that the clone? And they were really actually impressed with that. The Pinot Noir was pretty lovely, correct Pinot Noir. But the wines from him that really stood out to me were his crew wines from Najigid Hill. They were the NJK, which are, which are his initials, Nimrod uh, J. Kovach, and also his Grand Blue. Now, the NJK was spectacular. It was a blend of mostly Kek Francos and Serrat. Uh, I don't even know what it tastes. It was rich, dense. It was... In the, it was in the between of New World with some Old World sensibility. It wasn't too over the top. And then that's the one I liked of his the most, maybe the, my favorite wine of the Ega region that I tasted. He also makes a Grand Blue, which is 100% Kek Francos. And it was interesting to taste a Blau Francos, a Kek Francos that was that extracted, rich, really tasted to me like a deep, dark, central Italian uh, red, like a big-time Chianti Classico Reserva or one of those super Tuscans. Really interesting, because some of the uh, some of the Blau Frankishes I've tasted with too much wood just are too woody. That worked out really well. The last visit we went to is St. Andreas, and it's a big name here in Hungary. They actually have, in Budapest, a wine bar restaurant and also a Sky wine bar downtown, which I've been to both places. They're really cool. St. Andreas... They focus a lot on the blends, white blends and red blends, traditional Egger wines. And I have to say, I was impressed with their entire portfolio. Shireen said their basic white wine was maybe one of her favorite entry-level whites ever. Yeah. <laughs> she was just, she just heard me and she just screamed. Uh, I was also impressed with the, they have several Bicover Bull's Blood blends. And they had a beautiful one called Marengo. And then also a one from called Najigadeji, which is Najigadeji. I think I got that right. Those, it's a big of a blend just from the, the highest part of the hill. And for medium body red wines, those wines were complex, had a little bit of perfume. They weren't too overly ripe. The tannins were soft. I was very impressed with the wine. They also made a beautiful white wine barrel fermented out of Chardonnay and Formant. Great stuff. The label is fantastic. They're well presented. They have beautiful cellars. It's a father-son team making those wines. When I first saw the labels, the wine bar, I thought it was a big corporation, but it's not. They're only making 120,000 bottles a year, so beautiful stuff. So if you make it to Hungary, you have to try the Egri Bikever. Oh, one thing. In Hungary, you add an I to make it possessive. So Egger is the town. Egri Bikaver is Bikaver from the town of Egger. See how you added the I there? That might be useful and interesting. So check them out. Check out our tasting notes in the description box. I will put the article below. Guys, if you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Exotic Wine Truffle. I will see you at the next episode.